We've got week two of the preseason to reflect on. Stephon Gilmore has a new home, and the Raiders made a decision at quarterback. We're breaking all that down for you today on the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast. You are Locked On NFL Scouting with the Draft Dudes, your daily podcast for NFL and college football scouting. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's better than this? It's guys being dudes here on the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast. We're the Draft Dudes. I'm Joe Marino from Locked On Bills. He's Kyle Krabs from Locked On Dolphins. And we are your NFL experts here with you daily to talk team building across the league on the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast with the Draft Dudes, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I want to issue a big thank you, shout out, and welcome to our everydayers, those of you who never miss a single episode. We appreciate y'all being here very, very much. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Joe, we're about a week away from the end of the preseason. How's that make you feel? Good. <laughs> it cannot come soon enough. Like, I love everything about football, but preseason is just like this slow burn of getting through it, praying to God to not have injuries, but also allowing teams to get ready to play football games. Uh, so it's nice to know that we are almost done. Yeah. It's um, a lot of fans with a lot of just waiting on bated breath, right? And be like, okay, we made it without that injury. That's going to derail everything right like unfortunately minnesota experienced that with mccarthy although we would we did a whole show on yeah. dynamics for minnesota and if you're a vikings fan if you missed that we'd recommend you check that out from last week but um has there been another one like during games we'll see we'll get some injury reports probably today coming out of this week but i don't know that we're holding our breath in anything now guys have went down in practices and stuff yeah but. yeah just you know, it's it's the worst part about putting the calluses on and getting ready to play is sometimes before the calluses get there, they, there's an injury that's so severe that it, it costs you your season. And, and hopefully we can get all the way through this preseason without any more on that front, which feels like a nice transition to get into the games that just happened this past weekend. Yes. Shall we talk about some of these uh these performances, I, I'm guessing yeah. you saw the Caleb Williams throw. I don't know. Did you get a chance to see that? Oh, yeah. Does anybody have the link? I've only seen it about 2 billion times. <laughs> it's a fun play, man, right? I mean, yeah. being able to get out there and awesome. launch one, especially to Roma Dunze, right? Like, if you're a Bears fan, you got to be through the moon over it, seeing that go. Yes. It, it was my, me having a snarky comment about that was more in relation to um, – it's one of the worst things about, like, being in football media – Right. And there's always like the expectation, like everybody's got to be plugged in and everybody's got to have commentary on the game. And everybody had the same reaction of like, oh, I, I got to go make sure that we get this play out there and make sure all my followers watch this play. And when you have curated timelines and they know that you care about Caleb Williams, you just scroll down the timeline and you see the same play <laughs> right. probably 200 times. Yeah. But, well, but for the performance in general, like I, I watched all the rookie quarterbacks. And so I, I tried to, like, okay. I tried to put myself in a position where I had just like, how do I feel? Okay. How do I feel coming out of that performance? And I think for Caleb Williams, for me, I think he ended on a high note. Like it took, it took a little while for that offense to get moving, right? They start started to move the pocket early on and uh, wasn't a whole lot of success. And then like, it felt like that play was was an igniting moment for them, and obviously they kind of cap it with the Caleb Williams touchdown run. But you saw, I, you saw, I think Caleb try to to play within structure, and then kind of leaned into that improv, creative yep. playmaking that he has. And I think there was some some pretty mixed results, to be honest with you. I um, my favorite stat from the weekend was, uh, and I think it was Derek Klassen had it. I think it was Derek. If it wasn't Derek, you're welcome, Derek, for the free, free shout. And <laughs> sorry, whoever actually did have it. Um, there's this dynamic with those quarterbacks of 
Caleb and the guy that he replaced in Justin Fields, right? And they are both holding the ball this preseason in excess of 3.6 seconds per snap to release. And Caleb Williams has a sack rate that is half of Justin Fields, despite mm. holding the ball for the same amount of time. 3.6 seconds, which is an eternity in the NFL. And that speaks, I think, the vision and creativity of Caleb Williams. Um, and that's what made him special. And that's why when we, when we did our, our quarterback stuff, uh, second reaction stuff for Caleb was something that's like, I, I can't not have him on my list of top 10 just because that's right. the defining variable of him at USC. Kyle, his average time to throw 15 dropbacks this week. Can't, I can't even believe I'm going to say this number out loud. 5.1. That was Caleb Williams' average I've, time. Five this week. 5.1 on 15 dropbacks. <laughs> Kyle, Kyle. Kyle. 5.1. Yeah. The, I, I think it's fair to say you probably don't want to do that long term. Right. It's fair to say you probably don't want to hold. No, on. Kyle, that's that's two <laughs> seconds longer than anybody. That's high. Three point one's high. The three point one is long. <laughs> it's it's a small sample size, but that's also crazy, right? right? Like that's right. crazy. Yes. We, like, can we go to the other side of that and get into Jaden Daniels? Complete opposite. You know what his average time to throw was? You're probably under two seconds. One point six. Yeah, I I felt that. I watched. Well, that he game. just he just got the ball out. Yep. Efficient, right? Like, what did you think of Jaden? I thought he played a very efficient game. Did I, I think from a decision-making perspective where there are opportunities to take more high percentage plays? Yeah, I think he he looked to – now he found whether it was comebacks or outbreakers on the perimeter, mm -hmm. and that was pitch and catch, right, because the Dolphins were playing some zone stuff and, and given free access at the line. Um, Terry McClure makes an explosive play for him with a, a broken tackle on third down from Cam Smith. Um, so there you, you don't – go broke, taking a profit. He was taking profits early, but as that performance from him stretched, I thought there were more high percentage decisions that he could have made, but that's again, kind of the book on, on Jaden. But I like the fact that it was decisive. I like the fact that, that you saw the arm strength. I thought you saw good placement and the in rhythm stuff for him. Uh, but when he was rushed, it was okay. I still want to make a quick decision and, and not get hit. And um, those were the low percentage throws. Like a shot down the field that was kind of out of bounds didn't really give yeah. his guy that much of a chance to make a play. But I thought it was a good performance from him as a whole. Yeah, interesting. Just you could tell it was very much just get the ball out. Like that's what I had yeah. written on. Jaden Daniels, get the ball out. Get the ball out. Got a our first opportunity to really watch Drake May. Did you see that the uh, Eagles? I did. I did. Um, I think my favorite thing about watching Drake May was the third down execution. I thought minus one instance where he overthrew somebody. I thought he made a money play on possession downs time and time again. Even two that I thought the receiver should have caught the ball, made some throws down the field. Like him to show up in those moments was my favorite thing about watching Drake may and, and like some big time throws in my opinion, in those instances, kind of in those high leverage moments of the game that I thought was encouraging for Drake. Can I say something? Of course. Everybody lost their mind on the throw that he made the Javon Baker, that Javon Baker didn't catch. Right. Mm -hmm. That's what he did really well at North Carolina was that kind of stuff. I care less about that than some of the other stuff that you were talking about. The pocket movement was good. The placement down the field was good. The arm strength is obvious. Mm -hmm. You don't have any concerns about that. Right. People love those plays. So, but it's like a highlight reel that starts with like a nine ball on the outside that's thrown in the bucket. It's like, okay, this is right. it's a sexy throw. Right. But as far as like us evaluating who you are and what you're ready to do, does it move the needle? Does, does it move the needle at all? It's like it's nice to know you have that club in your bag and you have athleticism that you can throw it from different angles and timing. You don't have to be on time. There's guys that don't have as strong of armor. It's like if they don't hit the back foot of their drop, hitch and throw the ball, they're, they're not getting the ball there, right? Drake May doesn't have that problem. Right. So while it was a great throw, 
and it's a promising look at what we know Drake made to be capable of the other stuff that you talked about, uh, the, the rushing touchdown. Yep. I care much more about that kind of stuff in evaluating Drake may as a player. Yeah, certainly for Drake may compared to like some of the commentary coming out of practices, uh, right. it was a lot more promising than maybe what those reports led you to believe. Can can while we're talking on this game, and I know we got to get the break. Can we raise our glasses and pour one out for Kenny Pickett? Okay. Uh, I, I actually, I, I mean, I could have raised my glass. I have yeah, one. I, I don't want to get myself too wet here, but I actually yeah. am gonna. I don't know if you oh, saw that. Gosh, I okay. Pour one out. Um, he looks rough. I don't know how much you saw of the Kenny Pickett experience for Philly, uh, but Tanner McKee came in there and and I thought did laps right. around what Kenny did from an execution standpoint. Kenny's just not getting the ball down the field. He's not seeing the field particularly well. He went 11 to 13, uh, but was sacked four times. And it was, he looks like pre senior year Kenny Pickett at Pitt. And with the change in scenery, it's just like, I don't know that it's going to happen for you. Dude. Uh, let's let's talk more about Steelers quarterbacks, oh, stuff Lord. like that. Bo oh, okay. Nick, Bo Nix, other Great. preseason stuff here on the other side of it. Stick with us, folks. Passion, drive, and patience, the formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors is everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber and not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit only available to U.S. customers. All right, Kyle, I wanted to get into to Bo Nix, and we, we're, we will. But you brought up the Steelers thing, and um, – You you saw it firsthand. Well, there's – there's so well, yeah, in so many different ways. It's not just watching Justin Fields and Russell Wilson. It's watching Mitchell Trubisky. And then you mentioned Kenny Pickett. And I'm left wondering, was Mason Rudolph the best quarterback on that oh, team? Lord. Like, do we, what, what are we doing here? Like, was that probably your best play for this year? Uh, Trubisky is bad, man. Like just no field. And, and you could tell Mitch Trubisky is playing quarterback, like a guy who doesn't want to make a mistake, but also just because of that can't help but make mistakes. And so Kenny Pickett's bad. Trubisky's bad. I don't know, man. Rudolph might be, might've been their best option. And then like fields and Russ Wilson is who he's been for, since he left Seattle. Okay. Just a fundamentally flawed quarterback that can't execute. And then Justin Fields is like, Obviously tantalizing with his traits, but there's no consistency with his execution either. Like he can yeah. occasionally make a special play, but everything else in between is just highly inconsistent. Talk to me about Russ going eight of ten for 47 yards. What was that experience? It's exactly I, I what you not... thought it would be. Holding on to the ball, getting sacked, dumping it down to running backs. Like just nothing exciting. Nothing. And then from Justin's perspective, just not as not as not as efficient passing, but at least open things up a little bit. It's like, oh, like maybe there's more ways in which you could run your right. offense. I'm asking, not telling. Yeah, I no, want yeah, yeah. You think that's the right read on it, but like the bottom line is high variance, right? Just high yeah. variance. Like if you just want someone to execute an offense, I don't think you have a candidate to do that. And I think they got some online problems. Broderick Jones looks rough. Yeah, you know, what the heck? Was, I did see Greg Rousseau. He's got to use his hands, man. Use your hands, Broderick. What are you doing, man? So, uh, point being, I just, I don't know about it. I mean, they're going to win nine games, but. Are they? You tell me. Are they? Is this the year? And I know we, we sat here, and let's be fair, we sat here in March and said, you got Justin Fields for dirt cheap and Russell Wilson for vet minimum to come in and maybe probably upgraded over Kenny Pickett. 
I think giving yourself two bites of the apple probably was still good process, but there is a chance that the results don't. But I, I remember us having that conversation talking about like, man, they, yeah. they think they got two guys that are more tantalizing than Kenny Pickett for nothing for cheap. And I think that's good process, but it can still yield bad results. And I'm wondering if this is the year that it does yield bad results. Well, contrast this to last year, Pittsburgh Steelers were the most amazing preseason team that you ever saw. Right. So, right. Yeah. <laughs> Right. We'll see. I, if I'm going to get excited about Pittsburgh, it's it's what they have on that defensive line. I mean, obviously T.J. Watt is awesome. Alex Highsmith is awesome, but Larry Un- Larry Ogunjobi's a stud. Keanu Benton's a stud. I feel like plus Cam Hayward, like they got some dudes. Nick Herbig looks like he made some plays. Yeah, he's also good. Yeah, slasher style. And I mean, Marcus Golden shows up and then he retires again. But like, what the heck was up with that? Yeah, not good. But I think, I mean, Herb, the silver lining is Herbig can play, right? So I, I don't think yeah. you're overly concerned. And and uh, the Kansas player, uh, Kyron Kyron Johnson. Yes, dude's got it, something. It was, to him. it was a big time intriguing special teams guy when he came out. Yeah, dude, he can he can play a little bit too. So like, I feel like they're so loaded there, and I think they're their back seven is better. I'm excited about their defense. You'd like to think they can run the ball a little bit, but I just don't know that if they're going to be able to, if they're going to have to lean on a passing offense, I just, I don't feel like it's going to be there for them. But anyways, Bo Nix, um, my guy. Efficient, right? Looks good. I know. And I thought he was more settled. Like I think it's kind of lost in some of the results last week was just a little bit of an antsy demeanor about him with his footwork. I thought he played a lot cleaner, a lot more calm. I love the third and ninth throw to Tim Patrick, middle of the field, the second and 10 post to Cortland Sutton. Like those were nice throws. I thought you kind of got a little bit of everything from Bo, whether it was using his legs, second reaction in rhythm, down the field, in rhythm, chat, like just working it efficiently into space. I, I Come on, man. Like I'm excited a little bit here about Bo Nix. He's he's thrown that he must have thrown that touchdown pass five or six times in college. The little flipper. Yeah, but it's yeah. like that. That was what when when Bo plays his first year at Oregon, and all you know prior is Auburn Bo, and then you go back and you watch after he did, made the decision to come back that summer before his final year at Oregon, and you watch the tape. It's like. Oh man, yeah, he he's got a little something to him with some of these low red zone creative making plays happen kinds of things. And I I I, I just laugh when I saw the touchdown pass cuz it's like he's he's got really good twitch reactive creativity and decision making in specifically in the low red zone was one of the areas that I thought was a nice strength of his game. Any other like non quarterback notes for the preseason? Um, week two, I have a question for you and it's more of a question. If you're Jackson, you have a question. That's more of a question. Oh, it's it's not a, it's not an observation. It's a question. You're Jackson. What are you doing? Who, who's, who are you keeping behind Trevor Lawrence? My options are Mac Jones Jones or uh, CJ Beathard. It's been very competitive. Mac, I mean, Mac played well against Tampa Bay, but. Like, do you carry three? Is there any justification to carry three guys? Man, I guess. I mean, if you want, if you have to go lean somewhere else, but like, I think with the quarterback rule, man, I think your your QB three is going to be more valuable than ever before. So, so does that justify keeping him? Well, I the point that I would make is that I, I your ability to get a guy back on the practice squad, I think, is going to be challenging. That has any level of Correct. promise. So your so, hand might be forced. I think that's an interesting subplot here because we talk about the the new yeah. roster rules and emergency quarterbacks and why you keep three guys. I think if you have three guys who can play, you might feel more pressure to keep all three guys and, and Correct. Just keep all three guys. Correct. So a lot of teams, that third guy, who cares, right? Like, who right. cares if he never comes back into your building again? I don't think that's the case for them. And maybe there's some other teams that have that type of depth. But I think I I mean I'm I'm following these games and there's a lot of really bad QB twos yeah. and threes. So. Yeah. CJ Beathard's of the world are in a good spot. Right. Uh, I want to shout out Adrian Taylor Demerson, the Arizona Cardinals. Nice pick. He had on the sideline there. Yeah, he's looking good. And then we got a comment on Xavier Worthy and um, Chiefs getting him going on some of those over routes. That's so lethal, right? Like, 
Correct. They, they're, they're, they, they, nobody can carry Xavier Worthy on an over. Nobody in the whole world. And then it's also kind of like creates communication challenges against zone. And oh, by the way, Patrick Mahomes is throwing the ball. So <laughs> Uh, it's, that's going to be, that's going to be a real challenge for the league to deal with. The, the, the challenge Kansas city is going to have, I think is the right workload, right? The right volume, right? Like the traditional Z receiver was the guy who didn't take a lot of contact and ran a lot of vertical stuff and just ran the roof off of it. Mm -hmm. I think for worthy kind of the new element of that is those guys that run the crossers because the conflict that puts the safeties in. Right. So if he's going to end up doing that at a high volume in the NFL, how often do you target him versus how often do you use him to build off of your progressions and where you want to attack elsewhere? I think it's the, the big mystery for them. I'm sure Andy Reid is delighted to figure this out, happy. especially with his ability to kind of lean into 13 personnel. Like they're so right. personnel grouping diverse. They're going to be, they're going to be just fine. Yes, they are. All right, uh, Raiders named a quarterback. Stefan Gilmore has a team. We're talking about that on the other side of it. Be sure to stick with us. You've heard us talk a lot about FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Well, we have something a little different for you. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then with a YouTube TV base plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out-of-market game. All you need is a Google account and a current form of payment, and you can cancel at any time. Just visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to download America's number one sportsbook. Pretty fired up for Stefan Gilmore's fit in Minnesota. Super logical landing spot for Stefan based on that, right? Like he's played with Flores. I think that defense is well suited for his skill set. But it's like, for as much as I think about that, just reflecting on this Vikings cornerback situation in general is absolutely crazy. They ended the summer with Shaq Griffin, Byron Murphy, a Caleb Edwins, Makai Blackman, Andrew Booth, and Kyrie Jackson. Jackson's tragically killed in a car crash. Yep. Blackman tears an ACL. Booth is traded. <laughs> so for, for another corner in right, Nation Wright. Wright. Yeah. So then they add Nation Wright. They sign Duke Shelley, Jacoby Francis, and Fabian Moreau. It's been like, it's crazy to me how across the league, like at one position, things can compound like that. And so. Again, I think the scheme fits clear for Stefan Gilmore with Brian Flores. Are you a little surprised that with the demand out there that I thought existed with corners, that a team that, I don't know, like, do you, what's your expectations for Minnesota this year? I, did you think that Gilmore might have wanted to play for a team that had more of a path to be a, a contender? Well, apparently not, right? And he checked that box playing in New England. So whoever had the $10 million offer, that was a reasonable scheme fit. That's where he was going. Probably. You're probably going to go year by year now and keep doing that. I guess he picked Carolina too, right? Like he's kind of told us yep. that. Yep. It's the clowny thing, right? Like, you know, when guys are at the end of their career and the most important thing is money. Which, which it should be because your earning potential is only. Sure, I, I'm not, that's not and, critical, and, but yeah. And playing corner, right? Like at, at this point for Stefan Gilmore, it's a year by year basis. And it's right. just when is father time going to rear his ugly head? I think it's good messaging for that team too. You know, you you have the McCarthy injury. Everybody is perceiving that your season is lost, and for you to say, "Hey, we're we still got a season to play. We're we're going to be uh, competitive. We still think we can make some noise." Um, I like it from that perspective for like the psychology of Minnesota as a football team too. The Raiders have named Pro Bowl quarterback Gardner Minshew. Stop. As is he ever not going to be introduced as a Pro Bowl quarterback? Well, don't you feel like of all times that I should invoke that it should be right now? I have let's let's look at this through the lens of two questions. What do you like about Minshew being named the starter, and what are your concerns? Start with what do you like? Uh, the experience for a team that is kind of on that fringe play. I think potential fringe playoff competition. Um, I don't know that there's a lot riding on 
Josh Jacobs is gone, so it's Zamir White, who hasn't played a lot of football. You lost the whole right side of your starting offensive line last year, which is one of the better elements of your offensive infrastructure. You got key young players in Brock Bowers and Michael Mayer and Jackson Powers Johnson. I think a stabilizing factor is important or an experience mm -hmm. factor is important. But I also wonder what's the... His play is not stable. His experience is stable. Right. Like is, there's give and take there. Right. I, I think what you like is also the concern. And I'm for Aiden O'Connell, like I think he's a hold your head above water quarterback. And I certainly liked how he improved throughout the course of last season. And it's probably only a matter of time before they both, you know, are, are playing at some point, right? This is how these things always go. Right. Um, but I guess I, in my, I was kind of hoping it was going to be O'Connell because I felt like there was more to learn about him. <laughs> and that made right. him more appealing where I, you kind of know exactly who Minshew is and there's going to be moments. And then there's going to be moments, right, <laughs> with, with him. And so for a team that you kind of think defense, run the ball, sprinkle in the passing game, I guess the reality is, is there is there really a whole lot that separates these options? Like it's uh, – Gardner giving you more flexibility if your play structure is dead versus Aiden O'Connell – being able to push the ball vertically down the field a little bit better. We'll see how it plays out. I think that's that's a decision for now. I we'll don't think that both. they'll – yeah, they they will – Yeah, you said we'll see them both. I think that's that's a good way to put them. Yeah. And they'll sort it out from there, and then the Raiders have a long-term thing to figure out beyond this. Well, one thing we know about that team is they will be aggressive as they were with adding a top-tier free agent this past year, and as they were with trading for Devontae Adams, they have not shied away from trying to make the splashy moves. So do you just have the stars aligned to do when a quarterback is the big question that they will need to hopefully find the answer of yes for if they want to kick things into the next year? Or maybe Gardner Minshew becomes a totally different player that he's been you know, for his entire NFL career or – in O'Connell in the silver and black Kyle Krabs. Come yeah. on. This could be the this could be the most extreme version of Gardner Minshew we ever see. All right, we're out of here. Kyle Krabs, Joe Marino. We appreciate you guys for checking out the show. Make it a great rest of your day. You can come back and see us tomorrow. You can catch the show on YouTube or wherever you list your favorite podcast. We hope to see you then. Peace.